Housing canals in the Florida Keys were originally dug in order to provide fill to build houses and waterfront access for those houses, but these housing canals have become unnatural traps of organic matter. There's a huge amount of seagrass and productive ocean water that surrounds the Florida Keys, and those, those plants float and they're blown in by the wind. They float into these traps that have been created by housing canals and they sink to the bottom of the canals. And through time, that sinking of organic matter that's blown into these unnatural traps is built up as really fine, soupy mud on the bottom of those canals. Uh, it's not very dense at all. In fact, you can swim into it. Now, every time the tide comes up, water gets pulled into these canals. And every time the tide goes down, water is taken out of those canals. So tide goes in, water goes in, tide goes out, water goes out. But more water actually leaves the canals on average than goes into the canals on average because there are other water sources that contribute to the water balance. Now water that comes in mixes throughout the canal and, and leaves and when it mixes it picks up nitrogen and phosphorus and other materials that are coming out of the rotting goo that's now at the bottom of those canals. Those plant nutrients are also augmented by nitrogen and phosphorus that come in from surface water runoff, from groundwater flow, both into the sides of the canals and from the bottom of the canals. So the goo and the groundwater bring nitrogen and phosphorus into the canal. Nitrogen and phosphorus then is picked up by this tidal action and is carried out of the canals to the nearshore waters of the Florida Keys. So the nitrogen and the phosphorus that then is entrained in those canals and brought out has an impact on the water outside of the canals, which is normally supporting very, very uh, sparse seagrasses. But as the nitrogen and phosphorus comes out, first we get more turtle grass, and then we change from turtle grass over to other seagrass species. And as nitrogen and phosphorus continues to come out, the seagrasses themselves give up and it replaced by chest macroalgae that grow faster than the seagrasses. Eventually so much nitrogen and phosphorus comes out and is retained within the system that we start getting phytoplankton growing in the water column that decreases the amount of light that reaches the bottom and eventually get to the point where not even macroalgae can survive. So the, the canals and that nitrogen and phosphorus change the balance of flora and fauna in the nearshore waters. And those nearshore waters are part of the Florida Keys National Marine Sanctuary, and they're outstanding Florida waters. They're protected by statute in the state of Florida, and there's a water quality violation if the balance of the flora and fauna are changed by the input of pollutants into the system. So in this case, pollutants into the system change the seagrasses at the mouths of the canal, and therefore they're violating water quality standards.